when you show up late, you just gotta work with what you've got. There, we got another one. Oh, my hands are so cold. Hitting for you already? All right. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. Now you might be noticing right about now that my words aren't quite matching up with my mouth. Well, although I didn't know it at the time, my GoPro mic was on its last leg from the moment I hit the water this morning and I didn't realize that until I got this footage on the computer at home afterwards only to discover that the audio was pure trash on half the clips. So, while you guys may be used to me narrating with live audio, there was just no saving the dialogue on some of these clips, and the voiceover version of me is going to have to take over quite a bit on this one, folks. Anyway, welcome to this chilly mid-20s February morning here in Fairfield County, Connecticut. I'm on Mill River, and they've done two stockings, I believe, on this river so far this month. We've had relatively mild weather throughout February, so the state's been doing early stocking in a number of trout management areas across Connecticut. A lot of you guys have mentioned that you wanted me to take the channel outside of some of the regions of the state that have already gotten plenty of attention. A number of you specifically mentioned Fairfield County. Well, I was actually down at the coast earlier this morning doing some sunrise photography and I thought Mill River would be a fun place to stop before heading back up north. Now, I don't fish this river all that often. I did fish here last weekend, sort of in preparation for trying to make this video. I only managed one fish that day, but now that I've reacquainted myself with the river, I'm thinking it's about time for a good old-fashioned slug fest with some of these stockers after so many weeks of toiling for trout in January and early February. Now, some folks managed to beat me to the slower water in the lower pool that I just left, so let's head upstream to the upper pool and see what we can find. It is actually predicted to get into the mid 40s today, so it is going to warm up considerably. I'm looking forward to that because my hands are already freezing after just tying a handful of knots here in the river. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that it's still pretty early in the morning. In most cases, this early, when it's this cold, the fish are going to be holding in only a handful of spots that represent the slowest, the deepest pools in the river. As we progress in the morning, the fish will have a tendency to spread out a little more. So it may very well be that things start off slow and only pick up a little bit as the day progresses. We'll see. guys, really the two best pools, the sorts of places you'd really cherry pick, are already packed. Uh, there were anglers here before I got here. They posted up in the better spots, which um, more power to them. And when you show up late, you just got to work with what you've got. 
You know, this is the sort of spot that's probably amazing in the springtime, but it's just a little too fast, I think, for uh, holding fish in the winter. But this is the spot we have, so we might as well work it. I should have known that arriving, I don't know, maybe an hour after sunrise on a Sunday, it was too late to get to the river. I thought maybe the uh, mid-20s temperatures keep a lot of folks away, but you guys are warriors. <laughs> okay, the audio drops out real badly for a moment, but I'm saying that after finding most of the prime water occupied, I've shifted to a more modest goal of managing at least one fish, which I'd be content to consider a success at this point. And try to get out here a lot earlier next time. No, but I mean, truth be told, guys, there's more than enough fish to go around. And you know, it's also worth bearing in mind that as the temperature climbs today, which I'm hoping is going to start sooner than later, uh, these fish are going to start moving out into some of the slightly faster water, which I would consider to be a waste of time right now with how cold it is. Uh, that water is going to liven up when the temperature begins to, begins to climb, and that should open up some more spots. This is actually a spot that I passed over on the way up because the water looked too fast. And it's still looking too fast, but again, I'm working with what I have here. A little bit of time has passed. Temperatures come up maybe a couple degrees, so maybe it's worth giving it a shot. Well, nothing here, as I thought. So I'm going to keep heading back downstream to the slower pool where I started the morning to see if maybe it hasn't freed up while I was upstream doing some fishing. I promise you that. I'm gonna pull a fish out of that run before I leave. All right, well, I've made it back down to what is basically the main stalker pool. And it seems that the folks that had beaten me there earlier in the morning are apparently gone now or they've moved elsewhere. So I'm excited to see what we can do. I'm actually gonna take the indicator off entirely. That we got a little jump there, huh? <laughs> this is a feisty little rainbow. Let's bring him to the back of the pool. Got one. Prince Sniff. See if we can pull another one of these stockers out here.
look at this one, guys. Fins worn completely off of it. I mean, you know that's a stalker. You know, guys, let's face it. They're all stalkers. But it's fun. Sometimes it is fun to just get into some stalkers. Get some fish to the net, especially after, you know, a good month and a half of just brutal conditions and getting skunked. I don't know, I would say, what, seven, eight times out of ten? <laughs> Let's see if we can get a couple more. Uh, rainbow trout. Oh, rainbow just trout. got loose. So. Yeah, well, these are all catch and release anyway, so. Oh, okay. Just as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, so we've gotten a handful of fish on, uh, on nymphs. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna put on a woolly bugger and see if I can get him to, to hit that. So we're gonna switch it up to streamers. Be back in a minute. Well, got one on the woolly bugger. So I'm hanging around because I saw a big broodstock trout hanging around in this pool and I would really love to take a crack at that fish. Got him. I got the brood stock, guys. I had the monster. Oh my gosh. This fish is huge. Guys, this, this fish is a monster. He's an absolute monster. Oh my god, he's huge. No! I lost him. Oh no, I let off tension for, I mean, just a millisecond. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Just heartbreaking. I'll tell you what guys, stalker or not, that was an absolute Goliath rainbow that I would have loved to be able to land. And it is just heartbreaking that just as he was about to tire, I lost him due to a momentary lapse in my own judgment. Damn. <sighs> well, that's how it goes sometimes, right? You live to learn.
Well, guys, I'm back at that spot where I told you that I was gonna catch a fish one way or another. I promise you that. I'm gonna pull a fish out of that run before I leave. See if I can make that happen. There we go. I told you. See if there's another. There we go. Let's see if there's another one over here. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Well, guys, I told you I was gonna get out of that spot, didn't I? <laughs> Make that two. Can we get a third out of this spot? Let's see. Six. Uh, number three. There we go. Let's let him go right back. Uh -oh. 